Hello class, in this lecture I will talk about ANOVA. So this is also like, uh, this is also called analysis of variance. So the term ANOVA came from analysis of uh, variance. So you take these terms and uh, it's uh, designed that way. So this is until now in our previous chapters, uh, we talked about how to compare uh, in chapter 11, we talked about how to compare two populations. But uh, in real world, we wanted to compare more than two populations. Suppose I have uh, this is population one. And suppose I'm measuring uh, uh, the wait time of different restaurants in Killeen. So wait time for customers. Wait time for customers. at different restaurants so this is population one and uh, suppose mu one represents the wait time of uh, uh, wait time of customer at uh, restaurant one and then I take second restaurant. So this is population two. Again, when I say population, it is the wait time for that restaurant across its uh, uh, lifetime. So that's why it is a population. So this would be um, suppose mu two, the wait time so on i can start measuring suppose this is population k so the wait time here would be mu k so one of the assumptions in analysis of variance we do is mm, population variances are equal so that means if the population variance here is sigma 1 square on this is sigma 2 square and for this sigma k square so we are saying sigma 1 square is equal to sigma 2 square so on equal to sigma k square so all of them will be equal so to do such problems we actually look at rather than looking at the means and compare them we look at uh, the variances and compare them i have posted a video on the, uh, how variances are compared so you can watch that video mm from our lecture so in this uh, I will talk about how we will do hypothesis testing when we wanted to compare more than three uh, more than two populations so more than two populations will be using ANOVA. So the first step of hypothesis testing, again, this is to define your hypothesis. Uh, so when I define my hypothesis, our uh, H null in this case, null hypothesis will be mu1 is equal to mu2 is equal to so on until mu k so that means i am saying the wait time of all restaurants 
in the region in kilin is equal so our alternative would be at least one is different so for most of the problems the hypothesis will be these so these two will be the hypothesis for all of the problems so once we have a hypothesis that's the first step the second step of our hypothesis we discussed previously is compare test statistic with critical value So in this case, the test statistic now, until now, we discussed our different test statistics. In this, we will be using, because we are comparing variances, we will be using F stat. So I will tell you how to, how F will be calculated later on. And then the critical value. would be f alpha degree of freedom 1 and degree of freedom 2 so usually alpha is assumed as 0 0.05 so if they don't give you alpha you will assume this as 0 0.05 so the conclusion so once you compare this the comparison should be uh, f this f should be greater than f alpha degree of freedom 1 and degree of freedom 2. So here the degree of freedom 1 is related to the degree of freedom of treatment. So I will discuss what treatment. So treatment and then degree of freedom f2 is the error. So when you collect data in such problems there are two things suppose if I take a data from the, this uh, population one and uh, the wait time is suppose two uh, four five here and then here suppose this is uh, I collect data from this population and it turns four mm, seven eight and then this data if i collect this is suppose 12 16 20. so if you see one of the things that is is there is a variation between these data sets so so this is represented by error a variation within this data set not between within this data set this is called error so if you consider all of these data and put together all the all of them in one row so two four five four so this is two four five and then i take this uh, four seven eight and then our next data is uh, 12 16 20 so if i take there is lot of variation is this in this so the first thing is within each of the groups what is the variation that is what we are calculating and then between these so if you see between these what would be the variations so if we can measure variations with between this and by putting all this, you will get uh, overall variation, total variation, total variation. So you are comparing uh, between variations and the uh, variations within uh, in our hypothesis testing. So that is how uh, variation is compared. But we will discuss this in uh, uh more details so these this is called 
population one can be called as treatment one and then this is treatment two and treatment three so or they can be called groups this is group one so there are a lot of ways you can say group two and group three and you are measuring uh, the variation within within each one of them and between each one of them the data sets so this is usually the variation is uh, again this is as the name specifies we are measuring the variations it's uh, given by ANOVA table so this is how ANOVA table would look so this is a measure of variance again analysis of variance we are analyzing the variances between different groups or different populations or different uh, treatments analysis of variance so the first thing is what is the source of variation source of variation that is what we wanted to know so the source of variation the si second thing is sum of squares so usually the variation is represented by sum of the squares and then we have a degree of freedom and then we will have mean square so degree of freedom is df sum of the squares is ss and then mean square is ms and then your f value and some of them will give f significance so this is p value and when they say f significance it means p value so usually if f is greater than or equal to this uh, we reject our h null so the f value here is going to come from this one and um, we will discuss where does this degree of freedom uh, for treatment and degree of freedom for uh, error will come later on in this table but if this is greater than h null you reject your null hypothesis that means this is false that means inherently this is true at least one is different is true so the other way we can say is p value less than alpha so if p value is less than alpha you reject h null suppose your p value is 0.04 and it is less than suppose our alpha is 0 0.05 that means you are saying this statement is true this is a true statement so you reject h null but if your p value is suppose 0 0.08 is it less than 0 0.05 this is a false statement so you say do not reject h null so p value if it is less than alpha this is you reject h null if it is not less than alpha you will say do not reject h null so now in our analysis ANOVA tables we have source of variation source of variation comes from one is the first thing is between them between different treatments or groups so we say so this is uh, these can be factors also so treatments groups factors all are same so let's uh, write what all it can be called so these can be 
treatments so between treatments or between groups uh, factors between factors so this is between is common for between treatments between groups between factors or the other way is sample mean versus grand mean so all these terms means the same so if you see i'm saying they they are taking the average of this so this will be x1 bar and comparing with the average overall average which is the the x um, x double bar which is grand mean so they will be doing that so that these are all terms refer to the same thing so i will okay so now sum of the squares of treatment the this is the term so this is sst so this will be sum of whatever value you find here it will be sum of squares of treatment and it is represented by sst and then the degree of freedom is k minus 1 so that means if i have k populations it will be so the population 1 population 2 population 3 it will be k minus 1 and then this will be mean square of treatment So that will be represented by MST. So the next part is represents error. Or within groups. So I discussed if we if we measure variations within the group that is represented as error so this is within groups and then individual versus respective sample mean So what I am saying is each individual each individual you will be uh, comparing it with their mean so that is the error so this is I, I suggest you to have this portion with you when you solve uh, uh, Hox learning problems this is needed this table for Hox problems. So now this is sum of squares of error. So this is represented by SSE and then and this is represented by n minus k so overall sample minus the treatment and then this will be mean square 
uh, error so this is msc so once you have this now you will have the final portion of this which is i will use a different color maybe red okay so this is total or they will say individuals versus grand mean so that means this is this will be sum of squares of total so this is tss and then this will be n minus 1 so one of the things you wanted to understand in this is uh, so let me use a, a different color okay so this sst plus sse should give you total sum of squares so this is should give you this this k minus 1 degree of freedom plus this n minus k should give you this n minus 1 and then when you divide sst when you divide this sst divided by k minus 1 it should give you this if you do sse divided by n minus k it will give you this and then if you take this and divide that by this which is mst divided by msc you are going to get f value so this msc mean square error is also called common variance so this p value usually it is generated when you solve by using excel or uh, uh, mini tab so this is common variance of error so they will call it as common variance so if you wanted to calculate common standard deviation you do square root of common variance so that is how it's going to look so I will try to take a problem and try to use the ANOVA to do hypothesis testing uh, and then if you see this k minus 1 degree of freedom okay this is very important so this k minus 1 this k minus 1 represents the degree of freedom 1 so in this case if you see the degree of freedom 1 represents this k minus 1 and this degree of freedom this is degree of freedom 2 so you will take degree of freedom 2 from the error so those are the values where it is coming from so again I will try to draw this an analysis of variance in a better way such that you can understand so this is source 
and then I will write only one term but when they ask you you have to know all these here all these should be known all these terms should be known all these terms should be known so so I will write treatment error and then the total so this is sum of the squares I will write SS so this is SST SSE TSS or SSTO whichever different textbooks use different stuff so what it means is this plus this is going to give me this and then I have degree of freedom uh, this is uh, the degree of freedom is k minus 1 this is n minus k n is the sample size and this is n minus 1 so again this plus this is going to give me this if I divide this I will get again ms mean square I will get if I divide so if I divide this I will get uh, MST and then if I do divide these SSC divided by N minus K I will get um, let me use a different color MSE and then F value I will get uh, MST divided by MSE so if I do this this divided by this I will get F value so I am comparing this value to uh, F alpha degree of freedom 1 degree of freedom 2 to reject if F is greater than F alpha degree of freedom 1 degree of freedom 2 I will reject null hypothesis reject H null so this is degree of freedom 1 is this one degree of freedom 2 is this one so, so that is how you will be doing. So, let's look at uh, how to do an ANOVA problem and uh, try to see if we can do hypothesis. At this time, I won't be write, writing the hypothesis. Just they will give you an ANOVA table like this. And then uh, they will ask you to calculate different values. So in my le next lecture, I will do how to do uh, hypothesis testing. So treatment is given and then mm, suppose I have three treatments given. Suppose let me assume. So let me assume mu1 is equal to mu2 is equal to mu3 is my null hypothesis and the alternate would be uh, mu1 mm, no at least one is different at least one is different so when I say at least one is different I'm saying one of these is different so total so the values that were given are so uh, no source this is error and then I have total so the SS some of the squares values they gave us is 2350.68 and then 4 mm, let me see 2473 point57 so the next thing is the degree of freedom this is given as 13 and then ms is given as 1175 1.34 and F value is given as 5.23 so the first thing is if you wanted to do hypothesis testing uh, you wanted F value greater than F alpha degree of freedom 1 and degree of freedom 2 
so uh, the first thing is uh, we can do this later on maybe uh, I will try to calculate what these values are what is this value what is this value what is this value and what is this value once I have those values uh, so they will ask you to calculate these values in your uh, Hox learning so the first thing is what is this value what is this that is what I am trying to calculate so I will use a different color to calculate that part so what is uh, maybe somewhat light color yeah what is this so to calculate that we know this plus this is going to give us this so that means anything in this plus whatever here should give me this so the other way of getting this is if I do if I subtract this minus this I will get this so I will do 2473.57 minus 2350.68 so the value would be okay so this is this value is wrong I'm sorry with this so this value is completely wrong this should be 4824.25 so I'm trying to calculate again this one so I have to do instead of this I have to do this value is wrong I'm sorry for that so this value is 4824 so this would be 4824.25 minus 2350.68 so that is going to give me 2473.57 so this value here is 2473.57 so now Mm. I have this and this uh, I need to get these degrees uh, of freedom so these are uh, if I wanted to get this part I know maybe I will use a different color if I wanted to get this I know this divided by this is going to give me this so if you see SST divided by K minus 1 is going to give me MST so I'm going to do so this 2350.68 divided by um, the the question mark which is maybe I will put double question mark here uh, should be equal to 1175.34 so if I do calculate question marks so I can take these question marks that side and bring this here so our question marks would be 2350.68 divided by 1175.34 so if you calculate this you will get this yes two so if I have this two I know again I know this plus this is going to give me this so two plus certain value should give me 13 so two plus 11 is going to give me 13 so that is 11 and how about uh, this I have three questions so I know this divided by this is going to give me this so if you look at um, SSC divided by n minus k is going to give me MSC so again uh, I will do so this is three question marks so so 
so that is this so this is this 2473.57 divided by 11 is going to give me uh, this portion so let me calculate what is that So that is 2473.57 divided by 11 is 224.87. So this is 224.87. So if you do this divided by this, you should get 5.23 so you should do 1175.34 divided by 224.87 so if you see in our this thing mst divided by msc is going to give you that so so let's uh, cross check this 1117 one one seven five point three four mm. divided by two twenty four point eight seven so that is five point two three so that's right so now once we have these these values are good uh, what do you do you wanted to do hypothesis testing so f value here is five point two three So now you wanted to get F alpha degree of freedom 1 and degree of freedom 2. So I will go and F alpha degree of freedom 1 degree of freedom 2. So alpha usually if it is not given you assume it as a, a 0.5 and then degree of freedom 1 that is this value the first uh, degree of freedom which is 2 and then you have uh, uh, degree of freedom 2 which is 11 so you are looking for so the degree of freedom 1 is 2 and degree of freedom 2 is 11 so you are looking for f.05 to 11 value this will be your critical value so to look at this I will go to F table in our statistical tables so let me uh, let me take go to Google Chrome and so the so this is our canvas page so I go to modules and then look for um, go to calculation aids okay I'm sorry this is the wrong one so I will go to um, calculation aids and then download statistical tables <coughs> then do enable editing so now I have different F values F if you see I am currently in poison table but I have different F values F.01 F.05 0.025 so currently our F value is alpha value is 0.05 so I'm going to go to f.05 table so f.05 
is this table so I go to that and now if you look at it degree of freedom one is this way so this is degree of freedom one and this is degree of freedom two so degree of freedom one is two and degree of freedom 2 is 11 so I'm looking at 2 comma 11 so degree of freedom 1 is 2 so I will use a different color so this is 2 and then I'm looking at degree of freedom 2 is 11 so that is 3.9823 so my value is 3.9823 so my critical value is 3.9823 so again I said f greater than f uh, alpha degree of freedom 1 degree of freedom 2 if it is you reject null hypothesis so that means your f value currently is uh, the f value which I got from the table is 5.23 so this is 5.23 is it greater than the critical value which is 3.9823 this is a true statement so you are rejecting null hypothesis so when I reject null hypothesis that means my this statement is false so that means this is at least one is different is a true statement so that means at least one of the data sets is different so we can conclude that at least one is different So the one of the ways how f stat would look so if I am drawing so the f would look something like this f stat so if this is the critical value so think about this is our critical value which is 3.9823 and then this area to the left would be they all will have same values would be do not reject area do not reject h null so that means in this area mu1 will be equal to mu2 it will be equal to mu3 however if you consider this area this is reject h null so in this area at least one is different So when I am doing, I am looking at my f value 5.23, where does it lie? So you are looking at, you, it would be on the right side of 3.98, so 5.23 will be somewhere here, so it will be falling under reject h null, that means at least one is different. So this is how you will be solving these problems, uh, but you can use kind of, I can uh, use our calculation aids uh, maybe look at uh, and try to see if we can solve this using calculation aids mm. so I'm going to chapter 12 calculation aids uh, download this So let me see uh, if we can do hypothesis testing with this. So this value, uh, let me put those values. Give me a sec. I'm going to just copy this values from the sheet of paper. So this is. So this would be 
uh, so again I'm copying these values from our question 2350.68 and hit enter and then uh, you are doing four eight four eight two four point two five again our alpha would be point zero five into and then the degree of freedom we don't know these so this is 13 and then this value is given as 1 1 7.5.34 and then this value is given as 5.23 so now the rest of the values is what you have to kind of determine I think this is uh, okay so this is this is going to be uh, is equal to um, is equal to this cell minus um, so minus this cell and why and I hit enter that is what I am going to get and then this cell is going to be again equal to this divided by this so that is going to so these you have to calculate by yourself these are multiplication uh, addition and divisions so if I wanted to know this this would be um, again is equal to so this would be total minus the degree of freedom for treatment 1 hit enter so you got your critical value and significant is yes so this value I wanted to determine so this would be is equal to this divided by this hit enter so when they are saying the critical value is 3.98 and if they say significant yes that means they are significantly different that is what this is saying so your null hypothesis at least one is different is what it is saying so again this value here is comparing 5.23 and 3.98 and they are saying 5.23 is greater than 3.98 that means it's a significantly different when I say significant it means they are significantly different so that means uh, that means uh, um, at least one is your alternative hypothesis which is at least one is different is two uh, this concludes uh, my lecture on ANOVA so I will try to solve some more problems on this uh, and see if we can uh, do those problems thank you